Hello Hunters, my name is Amy. I am from Colorado, USA. I am not a content creator, so no reason for you to like or subscribe because I'm just an old lesbian mathematician who enjoys analyzing game mechanics and not a hot 20 year old. But if you really want to, you can follow me in the game at Foxtrot Whiskey Niner Echo Hotel 6 Yankee Delta. This video is about the Synodic Month in Monster Hunter Wilds. In real life, it takes about 29.53 days, and in this game, it takes exactly seven. The game illustrates this with seven distinct moon phases that will progress from right to left. You have your waning gibbous, waning half, waning crescent, waxing crescent, waxing half, and waxing gibbous. Finally, the following night, you will have the full moon. You'll notice they skip over the new moon, which is probably for the better, as players may be confused if they are unable to find the moon on a clear night. When you're ready to start your gathering expedition, the current moon phase will tell you how many days you need to rest until the next full moon. If it's a waiting gibbous, that's 13 mod 7, you'll need to rest until the evening of the sixth day. If it's a waxing crescent, that's 10 mod 7, and you'll need to rest until the evening of the third day. And if you catch a waxing gibbous, you'll only need to rest to the evening of the following day, as that's just 8 mod 7. It's simple modular arithmetic. You must be in the region when dusk transitions into night for the ephemeral blossom to bloom. I assume this is to prevent more than two flowers being harvested per full moon cycle because there are two collection points in the Windward Plains and another two in the Scarlet Forest. Each lunar cycle, you must commit to one of these two regions before nighttime. It is also worth noting that every player gets their own individual lunar cycle, regardless of the environmental link feature, so this cannot be exploited to save scum the day of the full moon for a friend. After resting until evening on the night of the full moon, it will take 6 minutes and 45 seconds for the sun to set and the ephemeral blossom to bloom. Resting fast forward to the starting point of the selected time of day, allowing you to shift the clock to the next full moon in just seven restings, which will only cost you a total of 2100 guild points. To offset this, you can fill your capture net with platinum and golden fish, which award you with 150 guild points, respectively. You will also collect a ridiculous number of platinum and golden scales, which sell for 2000 and 1000 zenny, respectively giving you a zenny revenue stream that quickly makes you a multi-millionaire. One of the best places for this is the Scarlet Forest Area 8 pop-up camp, where each resting can score you over 1,000 guild points, 25,000 zenny in scales, one or two wyvern coins, drifting in royal seed pots, and a hodgepodge of mining and harvesting points. You can maximize the foraging you do with a proper forager set. If you would like to copy mine, you can follow me at Foxtrot Whiskey Niner Echo Hotel 6 Yankee Delta and copy the loadout from my profile. It will grant you honey hunter, botanist, geologist, entomologist, outdoorsman, and tool specialist for your ghillie mantle. Everything a forager needs. For bonus items at collection points, you can also prepare a meal with the truffle du Congo mushroom ingredient for the gatherer perk. You may further maximize your efficiency by visiting Nata every few restings as he acts as a liaison between the collector NPCs in each region where you can pick up their contributions. You can also pick up fire festival awards and check for golden tickets to trade your night flower pollen for. These NPCs do not unlock until you have completed their respective side quests. Bye. I would also suggest you make regular stops to the base camp's support ship quartermaster, Santiago, who you should have set up to focus on shipping and medicinal items, and clean him out with your surplus guild points, buying everything, except the occasional weapon or two he may have in stock. This is a great way to amass a lot of high-end medicinal items for the more challenging endgame content in Monster Hunter Wilds. The big ticket items will be Mega Demon Drug, Mega Armor Skin, Adamant Pill, Might Pill, Ancient Potion, and Max Potions.
the one woods also have a nighttime festival which has npcs you can interact with for free and cheap items or you can cook up mushrooms and monster tails the opportunity to trade them resets once every game week so feel free to take advantage of that as well the harvest points in the windward plains are here at area three and here at area 10. the harvest points in the scarlet forest are here in area 17 and here in area 18. bonus tip be sure to check every region for high quality investigations each time you rest thanks for watching i hope you found this helpful I had to figure out how to get my own Nightflower Blossom for the PlayStation Trophy and the in-game award because I missed the previous method which was recently patched out. Since I'm probably not the only one, I made this little guide. And that's the end of my script. Buh bye bye